Hello viewers and welcome to another edition of the On The Spot Saying It As It Is. Uh, it is me, your host, your presenter, Chernogay. In the studio with me is Mariama Danso. Uh, this is the series on the State of the Nation and here we are. It's another week, it's an other new day and we have more interesting and trending issues in the house. Hello Danso. Hello viewers, welcome to another edition of On The Spot. It's always a pleasure being here, serving the nation. As we, as we all know, it's about us going all the way to the social media, looking at issues that are trending, ranging from the politics, health and all that. I'm going to get to talk about it. And like what Chano said, today we have interesting topics that we want to discuss with the nation, actually. But then before we go into that, we would like to read some of the few comments that we were able to outline or spot from the previous show, actually. Yeah, just before we move on, I would like to thank all of you uh, online uh, following the show. We've actually had amazing uh, reviews uh, from you people. The comments are really encouraging, and uh, the more we go, the more we get to love what we do because you people are encouraging us. So thank you very much for not just watching, but also taking your time to comment on our efforts. On that note, um, Danto would go on and read a couple of uh, um, text, I mean, comments from the comment section. As we always say, there are always hundreds of comments in the comment section, but we can only pick out a few to read. If you don't read your comment, uh, know that we are really appreciative. It's just that time is an issue. Yes, and, and so we, we keep um, track of everything that you're saying. That is with the critics and the suggestions that you make with regards to the show. Mm -hmm. All will surely be put into consideration. But then for a start today, mm -hmm. I'm going to pick from one John J. Jata who is saying, thanks for clarifying the issue of the Wi-Fi. Very balanced program and keep it up. Uh, that's from uh, John. John J, thank you very much. And moving on, another comment we have on the comment section is from Aisha Toure. She is saying, let the government start installing CCTV cameras in every office. How can we progress if we are not ready to accept change? Okay, and this one is from one Alpha Omsba who is saying, how is the Gambia going to get different results if the same people who destroyed Gambia are ruling in the government, such as the permanent secretaries, managing directors, and then board of governors and directors of public institutions? And he is saying system change is paramount for national development. So moving on, one more comment, uh, Danso. And this is from one Modu Lee who is saying, I have a lot of respect for Momo the camera, but I'm disappointed with his rebellion act. It is very simple. Accept Mr. Manjang's reforms or resign. Oh, that actually had to do with what we talked about. Mr. Manjang, the managing director of uh, Social Security and Housing Finance. That was uh, some of the comments we had for you from the comment section. Moving on, I would like to thank uh, um, Mansoor, our technician in the house, and of course, Rene, thank you guys, the camera guys and the technician people in the studio with us. Thank you very much, and to our viewers, thank you very much. Moving on, then, so what are some of the headlines we have for this episode today? Okay, today's show is going to be a heated show, I would want to believe, okay. because we are going to talk about one thing that is very much trending as, as far as Gambia is concerned, and not only Gambia, but internationally, but then how it affects the Gambia. Mm -hmm. That is the recently concluded exams, the grade 12 exams, that is the worst the exams, worst results, yes. and then the results that are out, and then to make comparison between last year's performance and this year's performance, mm -hmm. and then also a lot of noise has been raised on Facebook, mm -hmm. on social media actually, as to who should be blamed. Is it the previous government? Is it the recent government? Or is it the teachers that should be blamed? Or is it the educational system in general? Or mm -hmm. are we blaming students as well? So this is going to be what we are going to discuss today because it is something that is of national interest and it's of key interventions because a nation cannot, pro pro uh, a nation cannot pro proceed mm -hmm. without education. Yeah, so That's that is one of the, um, the points that we'll be talking about. Mm -hmm. Another issue also has to do with the press release or the press conference that was organized by the United Democratic Party, wherein their, their, their spokesperson and their, their legal advisor, Mr. Alma Mittal, mm -hmm. made um, uh, claims that the April 13 and 14 should be declared as a Matthias Day. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about Matthias Day, in simple definition, or look at, make a reference to Wikipedia, mm -hmm. this can be defined as... Um, recognizing a day mm -hmm. to set aside a day that that is that is put aside for people that sacrifice their lives for the sovereignty of a nation so that is it and then also we are going to talk about that what happened in the national assembly with regards to 
Central Bank and then the Minister of Finance visiting National Assembly and then these and other issues we'll be talking about today. Okay. Moving on, let us talk about the worst results done so. I think it is really very concerning. Uh, but you need to know first how many students registered for the worst exams and what are the statistics as for uh, how many people failed and how many people passed. Now, here are the statistics. Uh, this, uh, this year in this country, we had 13,335 students registered for the WAS exams. 45.4% of these were boys, that is 6,061 students. And 54.6% uh, were girls, that is 7,274. Altogether, it's 13,335 students. Now, out of this entire number, only, 240, only 241 boys, that is 3.9%, had five credits, including English and math. And only 234 girls, that is 3.21%, had five credits with maths and English. All put together, we are saying out of the 13,335 students, only 7.19% got five subjects, including maths and English. 7.19% done so. What does this have to say about the entire education system in this country? And then another, another issue that we want to put key attention to is the fact that most, most of the people that, that fall out of this range were either affected with mathematics mm -hmm. or English language. Exactly. Yes. These, these, two course these were the two um, areas, especially on the mathematics aspect of, of, of um, the educational system as well. Mm -hmm. Now, the next question one would want to ask is Where who is should be blamed. blamed for such? A lot of noise, people actually insulted each other and then mm -hmm. went all violent on mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. as to whether we should blame the teachers for whether what is happening or government. we should blame the government or that yes, of... Um, but then based on certain comments and reactions, mm -hmm. at some point, I think this is a collective responsibility. It has to be. It has to be a collective responsibility and then every party has to take up your own um, part of the responsibility that you should have played. Mm -hmm. When you look at it on the side of parents, it is mm -hmm. very difficult for you to get parents, most especially uh, during PTAs and some of these related programs that would be organized in schools, for them to come sit with these teachers mm -hmm. and then talk about problems that are affecting the educational system of their children mm -hmm. so that they can come up with solutions. Most parents don't go. Usually yeah. what they do is they send their brothers mm -hmm. and their sisters to go. When we talk about PTA, it's about you coming as a parent and then the teachers sitting down to come up with problems. But then you go into people's homes nowadays, parents sit with children watching movies and all that when they should be reading. So it does I, not actually... I, I think I, should, I would like to actually say something about what you said. That is the fact that it is a collective responsibility. I think when it comes to the education system, I think three main factors, or up to four, has a very huge role to play. That is the student himself, yes. the school, that I'm talking about the teachers here, I'm talking about the parents here, and then we have the role that the government has to play. So, so, so when, when you put all these things together, you realize that uh, every part has a very huge burden to play. Okay. Now in school, let us talk about the issue of the teachers. You remember the debate you had here, the, you know, last week what happened you people were debating on the issue of who is responsible for the mass failure in, in the worst exams and some were blaming the teachers some blamed the parents some even blamed the students so I believe this is what is going on first of all our education system has a problem yes okay the entire education system has a huge problem that is wh what is the problem here the problem is our, the intelligence of our kids in school is judged based on how much they have in maths and in English which I believe is not fair we have seen people who have not gone to school and have made amazing things I think the change we need in our education system right now is uh, each and every single student need to be treated as an individual. If Chernogay here is good in poetry, let that be recognized and let him be assisted to develop in an area that is related to that thing. If Maria Madanso is an expert in mathematics, then let us put you in that area. Let us focus you in that area. But everybody is universally, you know, based on everything. Everybody is judged on the same yardstick. And if you don't have maths or English, you are stupid. That is bad. That is what the mentality that is instilled into and that is what everybody believes. And then most, like making reference to some historians, they will tell you, mm -hmm. the educational system of the Gambia still remains the same. the same. Nothing has changed. In a sense, we were groomed to be clerks and secretaries for the colonial masters. That is to be able to speak basic English and be able to count a little of mathematics. And then that is what happens. And when you look at it, the same trend is happening. Nowadays, if you don't have a credit or a, some, uh, a good grade in mathematics, you know where to survive. And then when you look at technical schools as well, we have, we have St. Peter's, SOS and the like. These are schools that are doing technical subjects. And we don't only have um, the academics go in there. So in a sense, if you're not good in the, 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 the academic uh, aspects of, of, of uh, the learning, you can go into vocational uh, uh, aspect of it. Like we have food and nutrition, clothing and textile, home management and the like. But then these are areas that 
as a country we look low upon if you go into them people will think that you are a failure yeah. like, like for example, example i ask a guy if for example say i am i am even declared as the best uh, home science student in the school people will be laughing oh my god he's a guy so so these are issues these are issues that we need to talk about and then the next thing that i would like us to extend this into is the university of the gambia now to get into university you need five credits including maths and english even if you want to study law, you need to have maths. I think it is unfair to some kid, to some people. And I have been a victim personally. I have had to redo maths again and again. And I am terrible at the subject. You understand? I don't, I don't believe I'm stupid. But there are hundreds and thousands of other victims out there. And we have only one national university in this country. Now, I appreciate and applaud their effort to keep standards, okay? But I still maintain the fact that when it comes to our education system, every single student needs to be treated as an individual. You cannot judge my intelligence based on how much Danso performed on the WAS exam or how much Modu or Ibrahim got. In, exactly. You cannot compare me to them. We are not the same. Danso is good at one thing that I'm not good at. There are also other things that I'm good at that Danso is not good at. I think if our education system is to work, what we need to do is to be able to recognize the talent, okay, and the area in which our students are good. We have to be able to recognize, yes, exactly. We have to be able to recognize their strengths, okay, and appreciate their weaknesses. We cannot be good in everything. But when you want to judge every child based on the same thing, it is one, unfair, two, it doesn't work, and three, most of them will get left behind. Because if you don't have maths and English, you believe that you are a failure and everybody thinks you are stupid. So you also think you are stupid. Yeah. So some people give up because of this, okay? because they don't get the requirement to go to university. And probably the things they want to do, they cannot do it anywhere else. Because let's face it, we have only one national university in this country. So these are issues. I think we need, the education system needs to change. Needs to be revisited. Another, to be another revisited. area that was actually highly debated was the fact that um, some kids find it very difficult to get access to certain materials that will help them in the advancement of their schooling. Mm -hmm. um, just out of personal experience, we just concluded a nationwide tour mm -hmm. that is purposely to get to the um, rural areas and talk to people about the importance of university education. Mm -hmm. But believe me, you'll be surprised to see that people trek kilometers, mm -hmm. like trek a long distances to get to schools. So imagine you're supposed to get up like around three, uh, how to call it, five, six in the morning, mm -hmm. walk to school and then get to the school around nine and then come to a class and then even a proper seat that you need to sit on to, to, to comfortably sit in a class and learn mm -hmm. is a problem. Access to certain basic necessities like libraries that are well furnished and then having um, equipment that we would need for experiments and issues mm -hmm. are a problem. These students are not exposed to such things. So most especially people in the urban centers mm -hmm have that of an advantage mm -hmm. because for here we have a lot of schools that are very close but down there mm -hmm. some of them would have to use the, the with the help of bicycles so if your father cannot afford to buy you a bicycle you mm -hmm. have to walk to school so some of them actually give up even before trying because they've realized it doesn't make sense and then coming back to the same worst exams mm -hmm. once you fail if you have the resources to receive for an exams you do it mm -hmm. but if you don't have the means to receive the best that you can do if you are a guy is to see how best to secure a place and go to back way. If you are a woman, you sit down and wait for that for potential that husband that can come and get you out the, of it, your the, father's house. So I shape. think the system really needs to be revisited. And then when you make reference to the Gambia College as well, mm -hmm. it is the only national institution that we have that, that provides teachers, teachers mm -hmm. for, for, for the teaching career. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the state at which the Gambia College is in. At some point, it's really questionable. It is very is, questionable. Is the government actually paying attention to education? And then when you look at the national development plan that has been drawn, mm -hmm. how much attention is paid to, to education. education and mm -hmm. most especially basic, tertiary, basic education. And, and education in all sectors. Mm -hmm. You, you invite somebody all the way from Basse and the mm -hmm. person is in the Gambia College and every month you give that person a stipend of $300. Insulting. Yeah, look at the situation that the country is in. What is can insulting. 300 get somebody in a day? And I these people are fully matured, responsible people that are supposed to be comfortable there mm -hmm. so they can do justice to the educational system. And not just that. I think what we also need to focus on is the fact that, you know, the people going to Gambia College are people who actually have no other option because they probably have two, three credits four credits and they maybe don't have maths or English so they can't go to university so they get admitted into the college and they are not given much attention so how do you expect these people to put in everything they, they have to put in to be able to take the case? It lacks and, and encouragement yes. actually. And then let's look at the salary of teachers in this country. That is it's far too low. Now you were just talking about the life of the ordinary person at the village. Now let's be clear. I went to school in the provinces. I used to walk two kilometers every day to school and walk the same two kilometers back home every day. I did this uh, from grade uh, 7 to grade 12. This is what I did. 
So I went to school at the village. I know what it feels like to go to school at the village. I know that um, the opportunities that people have here and the resources that are available to them here, they were not, not available to me. At some point, uh, what, you use, what I used to use to study was candles. Sometimes I used to be so broke, I would not be able to buy candles to study. These things used to affect me. And a lot of people over there have the same problems. So I think the the government needs to see how they can provide basic amenities for these people to be able to study. You understand? And the, the, the place where I was staying, we had no electricity. And it is too far. I cannot go to the school to study because it's two kilometers. Okay? So at night, I will not be able to come back. You know what I'm saying? So these are, there are a lot of challenges that people face at this level. So I think the government needs to restructure the education system in almost every area. In, in the material, when it comes to the kind of materials that students use in school, the accessibility, the quality of teachers need to be focused on, and diversity Diversification, that is focusing on the individual talent and strength of the particular child, not using the same subject to test every other child in the class or in the school. That is unfair as far as I'm concerned. But the Gambia College also needs, to, needs some attention. I think we need quality, we need standard there. And the people who have actually decided that they want to give back to the children, that is to go and teach, these people need to be compensated enough by the government. Yeah. I think our salary needs to, need to be raised. Now, during, during the political impasses, we had a national youth convergence. I, I said this in the last previous episode. Over 200 young people gathered at GPI, Gambia Pastoral Institute, just around Kamium. I was one of them. And then we came up with some resolutions. One of the resolutions that we came up with was the issue of minimum wage in this country. And the minimum wage that we proposed was no matter whatever kind of job that any government does in this country, the least you should be paid is $5,000. The then spokesperson of the coalition was Halifa Sala. We handed the document to Halifa Sala, who promised that if the political impasse is passed and Barrow becomes president, he will make sure he hand this document to him. That was the last time we ever heard of it. I don't know whether Halifa Salah did hand him the document or is, is it just where that... Where is the problem? Yeah, where, where the borough just don't care about what we came up with. But I have never heard of it since then. And we come up with a lot of resolutions concerning education, minimum wage, and a lot of other issues. But I have not heard of it since then. So I think the government need to actually restructure the education system because we cannot move forward without, without a good education system. And one more thing that I would like to say to the government. And I believe this is very paramount. Uh, university education is far too expensive for the, for the ordinary Gambian. The, the, uh, the average Gambian person cannot afford to pay university education for his child. And university education is very important. So the government should actually try to make it affordable. I'm not saying they should make it free. But there's even a section in the Constitution saying that university education should be made affordable to the average Gambian. Section 30, sub 1, A, B, and C says the same thing. So the thing is this. If the government cannot make it uh, free, if the government cannot provide scholarship for every student, what they can do is reduce the tuition fee so that the average Gambian will be able to afford to pay university education for his child. Because this is a fundamental human right. Education is a fundamental human right, and the government needs to recognize that, and the government needs to practically work on it. Uh, like most people would want to say, um, education is still a privilege in the Gambia and not mm. a basic right. Mm, but then not. we believe a lot of issues can be, can, can be done. Mm -hmm. And one of the resolutions is to get teachers' lives very comfortable because I believe if you want them to do justice to the topics and then do justice to the subject, mm -hmm. they should be comfortable. That way when they come to school, mm -hmm. all the materials that are needed for them to get access to them and then teach the students will be readily available mm -hmm. for them. That way we can remedy the problem as well. And then the exams council also needs to really look into the time that is spent on these papers and then and then the, the, the methodology that is used mm -hmm. to mark these papers as well and then the kind of questions that, that are set. Because when you, when you look at it in totality, um, people sit to mock exams and all that, mm -hmm. but then the mock exams differ mm -hmm. and it is all preparing us for the same thing. So I think there should be a unanimous entrance body that would set up questions that are similar mm -hmm. so that all students would sit to it before their exams so they know their weaknesses as a school. But then nonetheless, mm -hmm. this is going to be a continuous talk on the section, comment yeah. section. You can send in your comments as to what you think with regards to the educational system, mm -hmm. which side you think should improve and then why and then that way we can we can see how best to come up with a solution to this problem. Yeah, the topic is a huge one. I think we'll have to, at some point, we'll have to dedicate an entire episode to this topic, which we will talk about seriously. And yes. we'll probably have experts come over, because this is really very relevant. But right now, uh, we would like to move on to another issue. Please give your opinions on the comment section. Move on, Danso. Um, from that also, we move to the April 13 and 14 matters they proposed by the spokesperson of, spokesperson the, of the United Democratic Party that mm -hmm. Um, the 1314, that is when Solo Sandeng and Co were, were actually arrested and mm. eventually killed. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as you know, the trials are still on. And then that was when the current vice president of the country was arrested mm -hmm. and some other people. Mm -hmm. So these people believe 
because they were fighting for the sovereignty of this nation. Mm -hmm. These are young, uh, these are Gambians, concerned Gambians that felt they needed to speak against a particular section in the constitution and mm -hmm. then it eventually led to the death of Solo Sandeng and some other people. Mm -hmm. So they feel that this should be declared, declared Ma as Ma a Matthias Day. Day that is set aside into our national events. Mm -hmm. But then now the next big question or the thing that is contradicting to this is most people believe it is a political motive that when you follow some of the comments that were made on Facebook Facebook and all that. Mm -hmm. Most people believe this is a political motive and then it should not have happened and then they should have put into consideration events that happened way before this no. one. And a practical example was the April 10th and 11th 11. student massacre in 2001. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, that also should have been considered as one of the... I, th I think the debate is open. I think right now uh, what is going on is, uh, is the fact that everybody is trying to put in everything that is associated with democracy. I think the students who died in April 11 and uh, 10th and 11 in 2001, there were people who were also fighting for their rights. Yes. There were people who were fighting to defend democracy. Mm -hmm. There were people who were fighting to, to be recognized as individual members of a democratic society trying to express their own rights. Mm -hmm. So why didn't we declare that as Matthias Day? And more people died on those day, on, 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 on in 2011 than, than, than uh, in 2016 that we're talking about right now. So if all of a sudden nobody recognized what the students did in uh, 2001, uh, April 10 and 11, and all of a sudden we are saying April 14 and 16, 2016 has to be recognized because of what happened, th then the question becomes um, whose death is more important? Solo Sandeng? I mean, what Solo Sandeng did was heroic. What lawyer Dabo Usain Dabo did was heroic. We recognize that. It was amazing. But why do, does it have to be declared as Matthias Day because of their efforts? Yeah, it is something that uh, a lot of people are not agreeing with. Now, personally, I would not like to pass my own personal judgment on it. I would just like to put it out there and allow the people to talk about it. But it is, it is questionable. Questionable in the sense that a lot of people are saying it is a political move, and that could be proven, okay? It could be proven that it's a political move because other events have happened previously, and none of them have been declared as Matthias Day. I mean, even the people who, the victims of the Farabah, incident could be declared we, can, we do we have to declare that they as a matthias day because those people also were shot and killed you know protesting to defend their their, com their community okay they were also fighting for their rights so does it mean that everybody who gets killed then that particular day have to be declared as matthias day it's questionable what is so special about uh what happened to solo sandeng and, and lawyer hussein udabo on the 14 and on the 16 because they were arrested and eventually solo sandeng ended up dying but the question is uh, why does those, why, why does a 14th and 16th of April 2016 has to be declared as Matthias Day and not 10 and 11th of April 2001? Mm -hmm. Because students came out, mm -hmm. they, they were shot and killed. They were defending their rights, defending democracy, fighting for the nation. Okay? The same thing that Solo Sandeng and Loya Usain Dabo did. So if now we are recognizing the efforts of Solo Sandeng and Loya Usain Dabo, but not the efforts of those students, what kind of message are we trying to send out there? It is questionable. As I said, I'm going to reserve my own side as to what side I am on on this topic. But yes, but I would like to present the case out there for the people to talk about it. Because I think our democracy needs to be reasonable. It also needs to be able to be acceptable to the people. Okay? Common sense exists. Okay? And this is something that we have to weigh on the balance of logic, on the balance of common sense, and on the balance of reasonability. How reasonable is it? Okay, how logical is it? What does common sense say about it? Since it happened before, but we didn't declare any date as Matthias Day, yeah. what is so special about, about the issue of Solo Sandeng and Loya Dabo? Is it because they're political leaders? It is because Loya Dabo is now the vice president of the Republic of the Gambia. Is it because he was the leader of the UDP political party? Okay. Is it that because the students who actually died on the 10 and 11 of April 2001 were just ordinary Gambians who had no political connection, who had no big names whatsoever? What message are we trying to send? This is the question I'm asking as an individual, and I want it answered. So if they can convince me that the death of uh, Solo Sandeng or the actions of Solo Sandeng and Loya Dabo were more heroic than the actions of those students, then I would agree. If they cannot convince me, then I cannot agree. And I'm not sure they can convince me in any way. Well, because both parties actually were fighting to defend yeah. democracy and, and their rights. Already there are a series of heated debates with, with regards to the issue of the Matthias Day. Mm -hmm. So we want to know what people think about it actually mm -hmm. and what is some of their says with regards to the Matthias Day. Should we really acknowledge such a day into mm -hmm. our national events or mm -hmm. Should we just let it go based on the fact that we had other people or groups of people that actually did this and individuals as well who died as a result of them fighting for the, the freedom of, of, of the Gambia 
mm -hmm. we speak. Mm -hmm. Dead Ahadara and all that, all these are exactly. potential victims of such... So I, I think I would actually have an alternative to what uh, Mr. Tal proposed. So, so instead of setting aside 14 and 16 of April 2016 for just, for just lawyer Usain Udabo and solo sending, how about we set a particular day for every single Gambian who have died trying to defend this nation and sacrifice their lives? We can call it Matthias Day, but let it not be specifically because April of, Usain, 10, because of April 14 and 16. Mm -hmm. Let it be because of every Gambian, the students, the victims of the Faraba incident, the Rahaidra, solo sending, and every other Gambian who have died trying to defend this nation. Let us set a different date aside and call it Matthias Day. I would agree with that. But designating these days because of these particular people is something I don't think I can agree with. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now moving to what happened in the National Assembly. Oh, yes, this, this past week. Yeah, mm -hmm. last week we've all uh, realized that Mamburen Jai, that is who, the finance, finance minister, mm -hmm. went to the National, National Assembly, Assembly mm -hmm. and then... For the, uh, he, he, Mamren Jai, uh, the Minister of Finance, went to the National Assembly for the, I think, amendment of the Central Bank Act. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the bank actually got approved on Tuesday. But uh, the, the, the most important thing is this. The minority leader, Jalo, uh, proposed that they should include in the uh, Central Bank Act a clause that will prevent our leaders from putting their faces on our currencies. Because if, if you, if you uh, uh, we have all seen it, uh, the previous, uh, the former two, two previous presidents, that is Jawara and Jammi, have had their faces on our currencies. If you see the Dalasi, is it the Dalasi or the or the it's Tala the previous Liba, 50 Dalasi. Butut, yeah. I think. Yes, you have Jawara space on it. And right now, our 100 Dalasi and I think only 200, you have Jami space on it. So, uh, the minority leader of the, of the National Assembly proposed that they should include a clause in the, in the act that will prevent our leaders from being able to put their personal faces on our money, which I think is really very important because it means every regime that come will change we'll our change currency. Currencies. It's and an I think issue. it involves cost as well. Yeah. So, the money that is used to get their pictures all printed on the money mm -hmm. and all that could it's have been expensive. used for something else so and then uh, as we see national currency is not partitioned it's not politically related exactly it is supposed to be something that is of national pride mm -hmm. so we don't have everybody supporting the APRC mm -hmm. so the national currency should have been something that is neutral and represents Gambia, Gambia. but not Jami as an individual or Baro or, um, or uh, Jawara. so I say. think that that clause should have been really included, uh, included in and there. amended but then to disappointingly see, enough Sorry for the word. Actually, we were actually surprised to see that the clause was, was not, not included. Yes. Now, get this. Everybody agreed. I mean, not everybody, but most people agreed with what Jalo said. That is the minority leader. A lot of the members agreed with what he said that it should be, uh, it should be put in the in the uh, act. But the act was approved on Tuesday. But the clause have not been included in the act. So still now our leaders can still do it, except I think a lot of people will go against it. But I think for, for security and for guarantee reasons, it would have been safer and more secure if the clause was included in the act, don't you think? Yeah, I think that that would have at least, but right now as we speak, which means if it's not approved or it is not amended or it is not added into uh, the, the, the act, the, act mm -hmm. the chances of us having Barrow or whoever is going to be the next president face on, face our, on our currency is very high. Super duper high. So I believe Jallo was right and I believe... So uh, we keep changing currencies all the time. All the time. So I believe Jallo is right and I believe the clause he proposed would have been actually inculcated in the in the act. It, could have been, it should have been there so that we will have defined futures that will be on our money. Mm -hmm. that will prevent other leaders from actually having their faces printed on our currencies because that's really important. It's important for democracy, it's important for the economy because printing money is really very expensive and every time you have to change it, that also requires another cost. And I believe we don't even need that kind of thing. We need a defined, we need defined futures that represent every Gambia, not a particular political party or an individual leader per se. Move on, Danso. So Saturday, um, the 4th of August, mm -hmm. we will witness um, the arrival of the dead body of the former president of this country, yeah, yeah. that is late Aja Afatu Asombi Bojan. Mm -hmm. And then this was a, a noble gesture that most people acknowledge the fact that Baro and his administrative had to take up means and attach responsibilities to the fact that we all know the late um, Aja Asombi Bojan died in Equatorial Guinea, but mm -hmm. then her body would be late rest to her own native village. And then Baro made a statement with regards to people actually paying respect, respect to the dead body and making sure, yes, 
we 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 mourn as 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 expected of us in order for us to pay respect to the. Uh, I think uh, Barros' effort and yeah. of course the efforts of the vice president was highly was really acknowledged. Yes, <laughs> I think them coming out, setting aside political uh, differences, differences and all that, and recognizing the fact that um, death is death. Everyone will die at some point. Mm -hmm. So I think the fact that they went out and saw their respect, including uh, even the GDC leader also Mama Kande did the same. I think this is really a noble gesture. This is what we need. We have differences with with Jame, but his mother passed away, and everybody will die at some point so paying our respect is really uh, is really a good thing and you on the comment section our viewers we uh, ask that um, you pray for her soul to rest in perfect peace and for God to also keep us here and uh, give us the strength to move on and become better people uh, it is a national morning event I would say uh, because she is the mother of our former president and then uh, we ask that you pray for her soul and all of our souls of course <laughs> now, to come to the big question that we want to ask each and every Gambian, mm -hmm. that is with the issue of NAMEC. Are they really improving or not? Okay, is NAMEC improving or not? In my own opinion, they're doing terrible. A uh, few weeks ago, I think it was a little better, but now, now it keeps going on and off all the time. They're like jumping light, you know, sometimes I'll sit in my room and I feel that I'm in the club. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? I feel like I'm in the club, you know, it's going to teach you tight, teach you tight, you know. People are losing their gadgets. Sometimes your, your fridge get, you know, uh, shocked or maybe your laptop or your phone. Things are getting destroyed. So I think now you really need to improve, okay? We need improvement in, in the electric city sector, in the water sector, and we're losing water, we're losing electricity and, and all that. And then do you think maybe the rain is a contributing factor to what now it has been doing? Is it all new or maybe... It has, it has been happening for long. Well, I think, uh, I'm not sure whether it's new or it's old, but I think it, uh, we need improvement in the Navek Well, we was, I think you will want to do justice to that. We want to know whether Navek is improving or not. Mm -hmm. I think we've exhausted the time for the show. And then I would like to appreciate the efforts of Mr. my able uncle, Mansoor. Mm -hmm. And thank God Pap is not in the studio today. I thank God for that. And then Mr. Rene also, thank you very much for the time that has been spent. And then it's an honor and it's a pleasure being here to serve the people. Why does he have to say, thank God Pap is not here? Pap is my guy. I like Pap. Rene, no hard feelings. I like you. You're cool. But I like Pap. Mansoor, thank you very much for being in the studio. Thank you, Rene. Thank you, our viewers. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your love and appreciation. And uh, we will see you next week, as we said. Uh, it's on the spot saying it as it is this is the state of the nation series uh, see you next week and we will have more amazing stuff for you people it's a bye from us